This is Larry Jordan, the host of the Digital Production Buzz. The following interview was recorded live on the exhibit floor at the 2018 NAB Show in Las Vegas. For all of our NAB interviews, visit the digitalproductionbuzz.com. Welcome back. Day one of NAB, the first show of the Digital Production Buzz at NAB, and we have a very interesting contrast between our last guest and this guest. We're talking with HAA Video Systems, and Bryce Button is the Director of Product Marketing. Bryce, it's always good to talk to you. Thanks for coming back. Thank you, Larry. It's always a pleasure to be here. The question I've got for you is New Tech has just talked about why IP workflow is the world's best thing, and you guys make SDI converters and HDMI converters and everything that doesn't involve an IP workflow. It should we sell all of our HAA stock and, and run and instantly go to all IP? Uh, certainly not. <laughs> yeah, we actually do both. You do? Yes, and in, uh, we've been involved in IP. In fact, we're one of the founding members of AIMS, uh, which is the overriding uh, advisory group. That's what, what's the name of the group again? AIMS. Uh, and the idea with AIMS is it's made, it's a, I think when we started, we were one of the first 10 to get the whole thing going. Uh, and it works with SMT and it works with groups like NMOS and so on to actually set standards. Uh, so when IP first began, it was a little bit of a higgledy-piggledy mess with a bunch of proprietary formats coming screaming down the road. Uh, and to the, you know, those of us who have been around a while, that idea of having something proprietary when it's all meant to work together didn't quite jive. Uh, and then working with SMT in a way um, that would really provide professional video, professional audio, keep standards, the AES type of standards that folks are used to in the audio world, it was really important to create a set of standards uh, that would allow us, allow us to interoperate together. So we actually uh, brought out the Kona IP card initially to make it very easy for video editors to continue working as they do today, the NLEs, etc. And all that's changing is the connection on the back of the card. Um, and then at this show, we've uh, brought out our new desktop software that indeed does support 2110. Um, and 2110 goes a little bit more uh, beyond what we heard in the last interview in the sense that it's uncompressed video, yes, but it's also essences. Uh, so when you're taking video and audio together and you wanted to, say, bring audio over to a show like yours, um, you can pull that essence out of the stream and you can distribute it elsewhere. So it's, it's built in disembedding and embedding. Uh, so if I had a, a synced audio and video stream, I could pull the audio off into a separate channel if I wanted to, or yeah, you could just video for a display monitor. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that's going to make life a lot easier for a lot of control rooms where they might need to do a 5-1 soundtrack. They might need to do a sound as stereo. Maybe you're going to actually put in a, a complete uh, you know, translation into a different language. So should traditional video people be afraid of the SMPTE 2110? Should we really worry about this shift to IP? No, you know, it's been an evolving thing. Uh, and, and in reality, most of the work going on today is some con kind of combination, hybrid systems, because um, it's got to be practical. IP, to pull it off in a way that makes content creators comfortable, also requires that you have a certain amount of security, that there are security standards are taken into account that your stuff isn't just siphoned off somewhere and disappears forever. Uh, also, the ability to know that the equipment you're going to connect to is really going to hear it. Uh, and so that's called order discovery. And uh, that work is going on with NMOS and, and groups like this as well. And those are very important components. Um, but we believe in making things uh, that are reliable and predictable. I think it's one of the things AJ is known for. Uh, so we have a new receiver um, that goes to HDMI. So if you're coming off a, a SMPTE ST2110 uh, pipe, you can actually plug into your, your standard HDMI monitor near you and see the signal. Because, um, you know, we've always been a conversion company, as you correctly pointed out. And for us, this is just another conversion <laughs> need. <laughs> well, you have a whole lot of new gear, and I don't want to get too bogged down, yep. but video IP clearly is a hot button here at the, at the convention. What's the new stuff from HAA? Uh, we've got a lot of interesting stuff, I think, this year. Um, we've, we've brought out a new Kona card. Uh, folks are very familiar with our Kona cards for editing. Uh, we brought out a Kona 1. This is a cost-effective card, 595 it's got 3G SDI in, it's got 3G SDI out, it'll work with all your NLE and effects packages, uh, and it's on a PCIe 2 bus. 
So something that's affordable, cost-effective, people are comfortable with. But we've also brought out a brand new uh, Kona card, which is kind of a new platform for us uh, based around HDMI. Uh, and the Kona HDMI is an interesting box. It's incredibly flexible. So it's got four HDMI ports. The first has HDMI 2. So if you're wanting to do 4K, you plug into the first port. Otherwise, you can use all four ports at once. And you can plug into streaming software for uh, vMix or telecast, uh, you know, Telestream Wirecast. Um, and we've been working with uh, groups like Sony, in fact. Because as you look at the world around you and you see what's going on, if you have kids like I do, <laughs> you, you will notice that uh, they tend to live on things like Playstations. I've not known that. Really. Yes. Hmm. And so, you know, you can plug in two PlayStations uh, and have video of the players, and this is quite a big thing. Uh, and now there's a whole industry, you know, in eSports, where this is pretty serious. Uh, in fact, there's a massive amount of money <laughs> flying around that. Um, so, you know, we looked at that and went, how can we be engaged? And uh, so this card will allow you to bring it in. And working with Sony, in fact, we wanted to go that next level as well. Uh, it'll support HDR coming in as well because a lot of the games are moving into HDR very fast. So what's uh, what's HEA doing on the HDR front? We've had a... It's been a fantastic ride that we're, we're still going with. Uh, you know, we've been doing it seriously for a year and a half or so in terms of what's in the market. Uh, we have it with our editing products. You can play it out on the HDMI. Uh, our new desktop software will actually allow you to capture it. Um, we, we've joined together with Colorfront. Colorfront are some of the most respected color scientists, in, uh, certainly in Hollywood. Um, and we got into the broadcast space with a box called the FSHDR that actually brings in camera log uh, source inputs, uh, even your standard definition, because uh, obviously folks are going to need to take a whole wealth of archive materials and bring that up into HDR. And so that does it all in real time. And for this show, we've introduced new 2.5 firmware, which offers a, a bunch of really interesting things for free. One is the H, uh, HLG LUTs from BBC. So this is a big deal. When, when BBC, as a you know, sort of state broadcaster, looked at this, they've got a mandate that folks having older sets aren't forced to upgrade. So it gives you the ability to effectively serve the standard television set today as well as folks that are investing in an HDR set. And so we've got seven of their LUTs that have gone in. And for live broadcast sports, it's going to be almost mandatory in some cases in Europe. So you can pick any of those LUTs, for instance, and in real time we'll spit it out. And we've turned on the ability to actually spit out simultaneous HDR and non-HDR. Mm. Um, which is really exciting, and, and, and it's a grave need because when we were looking at the costs and what people were struggling with, they're like, we don't really want to do something at this point in time that costs us a whole bunch of money and makes it overly complicated. Uh, so doing this with Colorfront has been very exciting. Well, HAA is known for very exciting products, and they're known for conversions from anything to anything. For people that want more information, where can they go on the web? So it's simply AJA.com. And uh, you'll find that we've actually introduced a couple of extra solutions uh, pages now, so if you want to learn more. That website is three letters, A-J-A dot com. And Bryce Button is the Director of Product Marketing for HAA Video Systems. And Bryce, thanks for joining us today. Thank you again, Larry.